Hey guys, Rachel from Desert Blossom Crafts here. Today I wanted to show you three different types of seams that are perfect for sewing garments together. If you've been crocheting for any amount of time and you've made a garment, you might know that the seaming process can be a little bit annoying. You might be unsure about how it works. So I wanted to show you some different seams that I personally love and use all the time. For the example seams, I'm going to be using these panels here. They're actually panels for a cardigan I'm making. Um, but one of them is finished, this one's pretty big, and this one's a little bit smaller. It's going to be the same exact size as this though. But I wanted to show you on these, since it's kind of a real life example, it's not quite done yet, but it is exactly the same way you would sew any panels together. So the first way you can use is actually using a crocheted seam. And I'm going to be honest, this is pretty much my favorite way to seam anything because I don't like sewing. <laughs> I crochet because I don't like to sew. And if that's not you, that's fine. But if you're like me and you don't like to seam, yes, 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 you can seam things using crocheting. And it's actually really easy and actually a lot more fun <laughs> in my opinion. The first step in any seam is to lay your panels together and make sure, for most seams, that the wrong sides are facing outward. The right sides need to be faced together because oftentimes when you're seaming, you, you'll you do the seam and that part where you do the seam will be the ugly side. So you want to turn it inside out in order to get the pretty side on the outside. And that is definitely how crocheted seams are because crocheted seams are more bulky than regular seams. And that's not always a bad thing. I think people sometimes think it is, but it's not, especially for garments because they're gonna be on the inside. No one's gonna see them. At least that's how I look at it. So if you're gonna do a crocheted seam, it's very simple. You can either use a slip stitch or a single crochet and you basically just line up your pieces and start slip stitching or single crocheting across. Um, one more note on the right side and wrong side. This fabric is reversible, so it doesn't really matter which way I do it. That's why I wanted to bring that up though. Make sure you check and put your right sides together and your wrong sides facing outward if your fabric is not reversible. So I like using a single crochet seam best. It's the pros to using this is it's really sturdy. So if you're doing a project that's kind of heavy, this is gonna be a great seam for it. So I'm gonna line up my pieces. As you can see, here are the edges. And to get started, you're just gonna start crocheting in those edges. So I'm gonna start, and I'm just gonna go, this piece is actually not fastened off. So if you think ahead, you actually can save ends weaving in and, um, not fasten your last piece off and actually use that to start seaming. So I'm just going to go in, make sure you see, in the same stitch that I just went in. Then I'm going to match it up to the stitch over here. And I'm going to pull through to make my first single crochet. And now from here, the, the trickiest thing about seaming is making sure your panels stay at the same points as each other and one doesn't end up longer because you seamed it wrong. <laughs> so that can be the tricky thing. So you just want to make sure each row is lined up as best as you can. Look for the different parts of the stitch. See how with this stitch there's these two little like bumpy things here. It comes in a little bit more there. Those are things you want to have lined up anytime you seam. So I'm going to go through this whole layer single crochet. I'm gonna go right here, single crochet. Just be careful that you don't pull up little bits of your project, like half strands of the yarn when you do this. You want to pull through carefully. So here is my seam just beginning to form. I'm still lining up those different parts of the panels. 
and you can really insert your hook anywhere but it'll depend on the stitch and it'll depend on what parts of the stitch are showing. You just want to look for the places that are easiest to insert your hook and you can also test out the way it's looking by turning it inside out and making sure you like it. So this is the right side of a single crochet seam. Bring it in a little bit closer so you can see the bottom of that stitch just comes across here. So it's a pretty sturdy seam. It's a little bit bulky on the inside but once you wear it it starts to come down like this and it's really not as bulky as you think it might be. But you can do it that way. You can also use a slip stitch. Either way of those will work. Um, but that is your crocheted seam. Like I said, this is going to be better for heavier projects. I've tried it on like a sport weight yarn, a really lighter weight, and it didn't work as well. Um, like when I turned it right side out, I didn't like the way it looked. I left it the way it is because I didn't want to seam it. <laughs> but it's going to work better for heavier yarns. Um, and lighter weight yarns you may want to use a different seam for. Alright, for method number two we're going to do the whip stitch. And when it comes to actually seaming, I would say this is my favorite sewing seam. <laughs> so for this one you're going to just need a yarn needle and if you have a project that calls for the whip stitch or you want to use the whip stitch, you want to try to leave your ends long enough to do as long of a seam as you need because then you won't need to weave in extra ends. That's personally what I like to do. For this one I haven't left it very long because um, I was planning on using the crocheted seam but I'll still show you this. So go ahead and thread your needle and once your needle is started you're all ready to go. So you're just going to line up your rows in the same way as before. You want to make sure they're all lined up and it's it's not so important at the beginning so just try to line up the edge the the one edge at the beginning but then as you keep going you want to make sure it's lined up as well as possible so here for the whip stitch you can either go from back to front or front to back I like going from back to front and you're just gonna insert so here's the yarn it's in the front so I'm gonna go from the back and pull my needle through and what the whip stitch does is it makes this nice um, it attaches it by going over the fabric so here's my next one and you can see that little loop comes down like that and I'm just gonna keep on doing that so from I'm going from the back and one little tip, I like to kind of, um, I'll show you on the next one. When I do it, I like to kind of hold it down to keep it the same tension because you don't want it to be really loose. Um, so I kind of hold it down with this finger as I pull through. And then when I pull through, just tug it gently so it's tight, but not too tight. You don't want to like yank it. However tight you pull it though, you want to keep it consistent. And that you're just going to keep continuing doing that across and if I show you from the top that's how it looks so the whip stitch is great for projects that are lighter weight kind of like I mentioned the crocheted seams are better for heavier weight now the last stitch is called the mattress stitch and this is also a great stitch for garments because it's more of an invisible join. That's another thing it's called. Um, so when we do the mattress stitch, I've already done a few here, um, but the mattress stitch kind of goes back and forth and back and forth like lacing shoes. See here they're coming out a little bit and you can kind of see it. So when you do the mattress stitch, you're gonna go from the inside out and you're gonna start, so if it starts on this one, you're going to come from the inside out of the opposite side, just like that. And then you're going to do the same thing but back. So here I'm coming back through this side from the inside out. And you're going to keep repeating that. So I'm going inside out, pull 
inside out on the other side. Do it one more time. Inside out and inside out. Okay, so here we have there's a little bit of whip stitch here and then the mattress stitch here. And if you can see it, um, the mattress stitch, it's kind of like lines everything up and you can't even really tell it's there. And the whip stitch whereas has these like loops that come over and you can see it a little bit more. Um, if I turn it over, here, let's see. Here is what the mattress stitch looks like and the whip stitch still has those little loops coming over. And it's not a huge difference. Um, I kind of prefer the whip stitch just because I can really get into the movement easily. Um, but either of these ways work and most of, the, most of the time you can't see either of them. So even though the whip stitch isn't considered invisible, it's, you really can't see it. So both of those are great for lighter weight projects, things that need um, a seam that's not as visible. The crocheted seams are a little bit more visible. Anyway, those are my top three seams for seaming garments. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for lots more free patterns and tutorials like this.